Hello and welcome, I'm Alice Garajuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. Ukraine's economy grew by 3.3% last year, supported by a good harvest and strong consumption growth from higher wages, pensions and remittances. If the key reforms progress swiftly, economic growth is expected to rise to 3.4% next year. Achieving this goal will require progress and further critical reforms to boost productivity and investment. The question is what should be done to speed up the development of Ukraine's economy. To discuss this, we are joined in the studio today by Dmitro Yablonovsky, Deputy Director at the Center for Economic Strategy. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Hello. So, the million dollar question. How to influence the development of Ukraine's economy? I know recently you've published an article on that, so you should know the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, when you think about in increasing the output, we probably think, okay, what should I do, for example, to increase the number of details if I'm producing details or producing uh, more uh, grain or other harvest if I'm if I'm a farmer? And uh, uh, the obvious question, of course, I should produce, I should like work more instead of eight hours, probably work for 10 hours, but it's not probably the answer Ukrainians would like to hear. So basically, we would like to really uh, the economy to increase, but uh, to increase due to productivity, not because we work more. And then the question is how to increase the productivity because... And productivity of what exactly? And productivity of what and uh, basically it depends on how you calculate producti productivity uh, because you can use some physical measures like uh, how much uh, certain input you have to have certain amount of output uh, for example how much uh, i don't know fertilizers you get into uh, the, the soil to get a certain amount of uh, grain then uh, or how how uh, many hours uh, of one worker you have to spend to produce certain amount uh, of uh, output a certain amount of equipment this is the physical approach but uh, productivity can also include the uh, price uh, ingredient in that so basically what you would like to maximize you want to maximize not just output but your revenue per unit uh, cost and in order to maximize revenue you have also this output multiplied by price and then uh, uh, you can choose you either increase the number of physical output you uh, you produce or you increase the price but how you, can you uh, increase the price of course if you uh, sell a commodity like metal for example or uh, grain it is usually a homogeneous commodity and you kind of dictate uh, the prices uh, so if you yeah, the produce market, metal the you just price. have this uh, uh, world uh, steel uh, index uh, some world steel prices and uh, which is not favorable by the way now uh, for ukraine uh, so but you're a price taker so to say uh, but how well, then what can you do then to maximize your revenue you can increase price and how you can charge higher prices if you have a brand if you have some differentiated uh, offer to your clients but then there is the question how should I develop the product which will be differentiated how I create the brand and usually the marketing people those are uh, to have the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. If you look at the history of marketing, there is a shift in the paradigm. Previously, the goal of the marketing was to maximize, uh, maximize the uh, sales, uh, the market share. Why it was that? Because you have some certain product, some bottle of something, and you invested in development of this bottle of something, and your profit basically depends on how many bottles you sell. The more bottles you sell, the more profits you have. And usually we had brick and mortar stores, this offline retail, and then again, uh, your success would depend if your bottle of something is uh, present at each uh, single shelf, it, it, at each single uh, point of sale. Now, so basically your idea is to bet on marketing. Yeah, but but the, 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 now there is a shift in paradigm. And what it means that you can differentiate your product. You can for example, somebody likes like I don't know uh, green beer. You can develop green beer for them. Somebody likes uh, I don't know brown beer. You create brown beer for them. And uh, when you create something which is attributed to particular needs of a client, they're ready to pay more for that. Yeah, and, to adjust to clients' yes, needs. Of if course, if you adjust, this you is... can charge higher prices. And then there is a shift in productivity. If you can charge the higher higher prices, you can uh, earn more and you can maximize your profits in this way. So you are maximizing not by creating additional physical output but charging more from your clients. Yeah, this is how business runs. But I also want to touch on um, this issue from the different side. You mentioned that, yes, Ukraine is a big producer of raw materials, as probably 
many other third world countries. And the question is whether we have to bet on production of raw materials or we have to bet on a production of the actual goods and actual technologies. Because raw materials have always been cheap. This is the cheapest source that then you develop with your own technology and the product becomes then and you can sell it with a good price. So, uh, but then I see somehow a closed circle in this because Ukraine has a lot of goods being imported and Ukraine as the other third world countries receives a lot of financial assistance. So basically if we import goods we cannot really increase tariffs on importing these goods because we are kind of financially dependent on other countries that are lending or donoring money to Ukraine. So basically uh, if the tariffs on import would be increased that would motivate the um, businessmen and Ukrainians to develop our own technologies and production and maybe that would kindly finance some um, um, the, the involving of some other foreign experts and foreign technologists to come to Ukraine and share their experience so we can build some production but the real production here in Ukraine production of goods what is your idea on this uh, because this to me looks like a closed circle and for now I just do not know how could we get out of it so basically you mentioned the import tariffs and I think uh, and there are some voices when experts say okay we should somehow protect our uh, producers, local producers and that somehow will lead us to increase the productivity but uh, the economic history teaches uh, us that it doesn't work this way. So basically if you create some special conditions uh, then your producers won't be trained enough for external competition. So basically uh, what is really needed and we uh, regularly do surveys of investors, potential investors, they uh, say that they need rule of law, they need uh courts that will uh, not, will not favor some of the business interests. So if you create this level playing field, if you create some good rules, then the investors would come mm -hmm. and in, uh, and they bring technologies. So and judicial uh, reform. Yeah, judicial reform is absolutely important because, again, if you either local entrepreneur and you develop some new, some new very great product which has a potentially huge demand uh, uh, abroad but and you have some develop some equipment to produce this product but if tomorrow uh, state security service or police or somebody else would come and take start this pressuring you. yes start mm -hmm. pressuring you so what would you do at best you would just move your production facilities to Poland for example and there are some such cases unfortunately in Ukraine if you that Ukrainians move their facilities to Poland, Poland. yes, yeah, they produce, they, they decide that they open a new production facility in Poland, they can keep some of the stuff here, but uh, they will um, sometimes move their production facilities to Poland. The other case of the potential foreign investor, uh, they may look at Ukraine and uh, again see that we are a country of a big potential, with which very good location near EU border, with uh, some uh, very qualified workers, uh, uh, with some potential... relatively big, cheap labor It's resources not that cheap here. anymore, but uh, still is quite it, it's uh, yeah, I would Europe. say it's a good value added a uh, very good good uh, value for money I would say because uh, we, are, uh, we have quite a uh, qualified labor force and see it's still relatively cheap and then but then you look at the conditions and you see that in the, the protection of your property rights if you build your own plant if you uh, bring some very expensive equipment to Ukraine will it be protective uh, protected yeah. enough so <clears throat> I hope that with the change of the uh, with the powers, political power in Ukraine, with a new president, with a new parliament, and uh, we'll see probably a new government in September. The, this will be put as a highest priority: this protection of property mm -hmm. rights, and basically. Uh, because I don't believe that the state should think of kind of industries and should uh, think, uh, should know, uh, the state would never know better what entrepreneurs should produce. The entrepreneurs should decide themselves, but the state should create the conditions. The it conditions, should create the, the conditions for the talented Ukrainians mm -hmm. not to go to abroad, to Silicon Valley, for example, but to start their production here in Ukraine. Well, many Ukrainians are going to Silicon Valley just because they run um, uh, after money. Uh, so here we do not speak about judicial reform. But yes, just to sum up, uh, insecurity is the highest risk uh, the, for foreign investors um, and they, 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 uh, yeah. that they would be afraid of. But if we're talking about small or medium-scale business, how 
do you think Ukraine can um, can develop this kind of business? Because we're not only talking about big monopolies. Yeah. Again, uh, the first thing I would stress is uh, that uh, the government or the state should not uh, pretend it knows better what to produce and it should not uh, tell the business what to produce, but it should create uh, the conditions. When we looked at the structure of small and medium business in Ukraine, in Germany, for example, so we compared it with a German Mittelstand, we saw that in Ukraine there are really, really a huge number of private entrepreneurs, but rare, a relatively small number of uh, medium businesses. So basically, unfortunately, Ukrainian entrepreneurs, they just uh, start their business, uh, but they uh, retain micro business. They do not grow into small and medium business. They uh, relatively few of them export things. So what the state should do, it should create the conditions when this micro business would uh, be happy to grow into medium business, mm -hmm. when it would be happy and would have ideas to how to export something. And then if they get this competitive product uh, sold uh, somewhere in Europe or in other countries abroad, then they would really uh, produce value added and they can become the foundation uh, of Ukrainian economy. Not a uh, very large business, not oligarchs. Again, I'm not against big business, but if you look uh, at the structure of Ukrainian economy, uh, I would expect to have higher share of small and medium businesses, and yeah. this will be for the good for, of the economy because uh, they will bring new uh, creative ideas, and new pro if they will increase productivity, and, and the a lot whole, of ideas, and a the lot whole of economy would be diversified. It wouldn't mm -hmm. won't be uh, actually dependent on a uh, few types of uh, I don't know either metal or uh, crops, yeah. and that's all. Just on the few pillars. So basically, yeah. now we are uh, referring to deregulation reform, if I may say so, because now deregulation reform kinds of try to facilitate these business conditions for small and uh, medium-scale businesses, at least to decrease this enormous number yeah. of inspections mm. that um, they have to face and this inspections but inspections it's, it's, it's are basically aimed at the regulation actually because for the again if you this open this so-called FOB or private entrepreneur it's not that difficult to run the micro business because it's you, you don't have so ma so much bureaucracy and red tape connected but then to there that. is a lot of pressure yeah. from the state but then uh, then the issue is when you're trying to become a larger business when you uh, open a limited uh, liability company then you get the attention from the uh, fiscal services, etc. So we need somehow to assist this micro business to grow into limi limited liability companies uh, and uh, grow their business. So mm -hmm. they're not afraid of uh, growing and not afraid of exporting. So we not only need not only to regulate, but also think of how we can provide financial resources in terms of loans uh, to boost their business, uh, how we can assist them into bringing their uh, product offer overseas and again the state uh, can facilitate that uh, as well. You also remember that, well, you noted that uh, small businesses sometimes can have really creative ideas. And in your article about the development of Ukraine's economy, I've read an interesting example, um, and I want to let our audience know and read it. Uh, just recently, a group of scientists have brewed a radioactivity-free vodka called Atomic using uh, crops in Chernobyl's abandoned zone. The team started uh, the vodka project by growing crops on a farm in the zone. Um, and it's, as I mentioned, radi radiation-free. Uh, why do you think people should be interested in this uh, kind of product? Wouldn't uh, they take it as a risky one? I think in Ukraine, yes, uh, probably uh, Chernobyl is not something uh, really, I don't know, popular and uh, this is uh, associated for many Ukrainians with bad memories. But on the other hand, after the, this uh, TV series uh, came on the air, I mean, uh, HBO TV series, I think uh, it's kind of a hot topic. Chernobyl became a kind of a, a brand. So uh, again, this can be used by Ukrainians uh, to, to pr produce something and to brand Exploited. it with a brand name and to help to sell. But again, this is just an example uh, because again, if you just, for example, uh, if you grow wheat, it's just your price taker. <clears throat> if you start, for example, making vodka out of this wheat, then probably you can have some good brand and you can increase price. But if you associate with some really 
great brand and it is a kind of very hot topic and to discuss so basically you can charge prices probably 10 times higher and that then we get to this increase in productivity because on the one hand you can be a price taker with just selling wheat a raw a raw wheat on the other hand you can sell very expensive product <coughs> at a very high margin so it's just one example but if we manage to use it as a paradigm and shift our thinking into this marketing way so basically basically we can apply to this this uh, to any product uh, we can not just sell honey but add some nuts there and there is such a brand uh, which is called uh, not Schmott, and you can sell it at much more higher price and you can again this this innovation can, can touch any any kind of a product the, but the secret is that again when you should be innovation should be innovation and allows be at charging higher prices and increases productivity. At the end of the day, this will lead uh, the economy to grow at five to seven percent per annum, which was kind of a whole topic now about the politicians because now they compete by telling us, okay, we can grow five percent or seven percent or even ten percent. But then, what is the recipe? My answer would be that we should uh, think of uh, innovation, innovation in products, increasing productivity uh, both physically and uh, by price factor. Uh, and if we really have a lot of branded products that will allow us to grow five, seven or even ten percent per annum. Well, this is a good recipe indeed for the manufacturers. Just if we speak about this Chernobyl vodka. Then <laughs> another issue comes up: the trust to the, manu to the, to, to the manufacturer. Excuse me, whether it's really radioactive free, uh, radiation free. Excuse me, uh, but. Um well, thank you so much for summing up and uh, telling us, um, sharing with us these ideas. Uh, so far, we ran out of time, but thank you for being a guest today You're in our welcome. studio. That was Mitro Yablonovsky, Deputy Director at the Center for Economic Strategy. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more with UATV. Yeah.